What's up everybody? Back again with another reaction. And next up, I got the another top 10 amazing games that never got a sequel. So, it's by the channel Watch Mojo. I'll leave the uh, link to the original video in the description below. So, but uh, anyways, before I start, I could probably name quite a few games that deserve a sequel that never got it. <clears throat> Super Mario RPG. But uh, anyways, so yeah. Let's get it. Travesty that the only thing getting a sequel around here is the list about things that never got a sequel. Welcome right. to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for another top 10 amazing video games that never got a sequel. Strike two, running over an elderly person without a license. For this list, we're looking at a variety of video games that, despite receiving critical acclaim, never had a follow-up. Games released after 2012 will not be included, as there's still a chance that they'll get a sequel. Additionally, if there is a game you think we missed, check out our first video regarding the subject, as it may be shown there. So now you're gonna tell me you loved her? Ah, the DA goes all gooey over remorse, Jay. Number 10, Vampire, The Masquerade, Bloodlines. My fellow kindred, my apologies for disrupting any business or interfering with prior engagements you may have had this evening. Inspired by the tabletop role-playing game of the same name, Bloodlines has the player controlling either a male or female character who has been resurrected into a vampire after their grisly murder. Much of the game's praise was in regard to the vast amount of choice that it offered the players. I've suddenly got the urge to walk down that dock and hold the Never heard of this game. Care to join me? With an expansive group of clans to interact with, branching choices, and characters reacting to you based on your actions and clan loyalty, Bloodlines provided a deep gaming world that was definitely ahead of its time and a pleasure for you to sink your teeth into. Bugs in the initial release sadly prevented this title from getting the recognition it deserved. Heck, if only day one patches were a thing back in 2004. Allowing you to live makes me directly responsible for your subsequent behavior. So, what I'm offering is not generosity, but the opportunity to transcend the fate woven by your sire. Number nine, The Simpsons Hit and Run. Right? good licensed video game isn't exactly an easy thing to come across, so whenever a halfway decent one comes around, it's something to be appreciated. The Simpsons Hit and Run was much more than just decent, however. Dude, I'd kill for a sequel for that. Show, it, or just, just and dialogue for the game. a remastered on the PS4, that'd the be awesome. Fans of the franchise. I destroyed the limo and killed <laughs> <laughs> No murderer ye be. He wasn't in the limo. He got out and he boarded that ship. Can you take me there? Nah, I hate the sea. <laughs> Players adored being able to step into the shoes of all their favorite characters and live out Grand Theft Auto style antics and mayhem in a fully realized Springfield sandbox. With such a positive reception and the show still going strong, it's a mystery why Fox didn't take advantage of this hit and run with it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these space ratings for foolish good. earthlings. What happened, Kang? Foolish earthlings used to be the number one reality show in the galaxy. Number eight, Sleeping Dogs. Your job was to get close well, to Winston. Well, you all know why that didn't get a sequel, unfortunately. Get close to Open your eyes, Raymond. I am Winston now. With him gone, I'll be taking his place. You want the chairman? I report to him now. You want the Red Poles? I'm one of them. Originally planned as another entry in the True Crime series, Sleeping Dogs had a fairly lengthy and troubled production cycle. Despite all the hurdles the dev team faced, they still managed to create an addictive open-world action game with a fun combat system, and they even threw in some RPG elements for good measure. Let's query Enix. So. If this is what the developers were able to produce from a troubled production, just imagine what they could do if a sequel had a smooth progress all the way through. It could take advantage of newer hardware to create a larger environment with even more to do. Unfortunately, with developer United Front Games closing down, the uh, chances that this sleeping say. dog will ever wake up are not very high. Wait, man, you look like shit. Hey, f you. Number seven, Enslaved, Odyssey to the West. I come from I think I may have heard of this game. From here. I'll never make it on my own. Made by the same team behind Heavenly Sword and the Devil May Cry reboot. Now that's why it looks like, game and that's why it looks familiar. Experience. The game served as a reimagining of the classic Chinese novel, Journey to the West, swapping the source material's fantasy-based elements for a post-apocalyptic sci-fi approach. Welcome to Slave Ship 909, en route to Pyramid. 
You have been assessed, and any injuries sustained during your capture have been designated as non-life-threatening. The experience was just the right balance of fun and challenge. The graphics were full of lush colors, and the motion capture talents of Andy Serkis, featured within, were widely praised. Enslaved also featured plenty of emotional and funny moments, which all added to its thrills for a complete gaming package. Another entry was planned, but the game unfortunately sold very poorly, crushing any chance of seeing this odyssey continue. <laughs> Number six, Spec Ops The Line. Here we find yet another video game inspired by a classic novel. This one set in a sort of quasi post apocalyptic setting. In this instance, developer Jaeger Development drew from Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness to come up with the narrative and scenarios for this action packed shooter. The interesting twist that they went for is how the game was designed to be purposely upsetting and overly graphic, making the players question their actions, as well as calling to attention the many horrors that war can bring about. Are those... civilians? Where'd they come from? There's no camp here! They took them from the nest. This unconventional perspective for a military-themed video game earned the studio several nominations for their storytelling. The same can't be said on the financial side of things, though, as Spec Ops tanked sales-wise. That's impressive. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> you said it, not me. Number five, Vagrant Story. I've heard Sony's that. original PlayStation was the home to many of gaming's finest RPGs, including Parasite Eve, Persona, Xenogears, and a little thing called Final Fantasy. Despite all of those heavy hitters already on the system, Vagrant Story was somehow able to avoid being overshadowed thanks to its intelligent and creative design. The combat system was innovative and deep, and its story was highly compelling. It also deviated from RPG norms, with no towns or shops. Instead, the player was given a robust weapon customization system at their disposal. The icing on the cake was the breathtaking character models and backgrounds, which pushed the graphical capabilities of the console to their limits. It's a shame that the story didn't really get to continue. Damn. Number four, Bullet Storm. You feel that first person shooters are kind of a dime a dozen these days? Well, there's no shame in agreeing, as the gaming landscape is practically littered with military based shooters with not so much to differentiate them. Epic exactly. Games, the people behind Gears of War, looked to change the norms of the genre with this fast paced shooter that was bursting at the seams with stylish action and crass humor. I still want to play it though, because, you know, I don't know, FPS games aren't really my thing. It was so special because it encouraged the player to get creative with their kills, rewarding them with points based on what kind of zany violent tendencies they'd pulled out. That is crazy though. This allowed players to play the game their way, propelling it into a category of shooters that aren't just your standard move from point A to point B affairs. Attack my pet! Lay waste to the freaks! Number three, L.A. Noir. I heard that game was amazing. I never played it, but I heard it was amazing. Be careful, Phelps. This is his game you're playing now. It is Rockstar Games you're talking about. On the opposite side of the law in Grand Theft Auto. But switching up the open world crime formula, L.A. Noir tasks us with playing the cops instead of the robbers, and it delivered an experience like no other. The game was noteworthy for its stunning motion capture technology in how it was able to simulate realistic facial animations. This went hand in hand with the interrogation sections, helping to make you feel like a real detective on the case. You're lying, Jacob. It was falling apart and things got violent. I'm not lying. I'm telling you how it was. The really sad part is not only did this game not receive a sequel, but it was developer team Bondi's only release before they were shut down just a few months after L.A. Noir launched. Brutality on a scale yeah. such as this deserves retribution. The it's hard. And the press of this city demand it. Number two, 13. In your deposition, you even added that you don't feel like a killer. How touching. I've heard of this game, just never seen it. Tone out. Now does it. Here we have another standout first person shooter that emphasizes a lot more than just bam, pow, boo, boo, boo taking full advantage of its Belgian graphic novel roots. 13 rocked a cel-shaded visual art style long before Borderlands was ever even a concept. Huh? 
there's not a single moment in the entire game that doesn't make you feel like you're moving through the pages of a comic book, with sound effects appearing in big onomatopoeia letters on screen, as well as panels popping up to show objectives and other in-game events. Perhaps the most annoying part, though, is that the game ended on a cliffhanger to set up an intended sequel. So, where's that sequel, Ubisoft? Are the fireworks not to your liking, Mr. Fly? Before we reveal our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Orange Clutchy at 60, never heard of it. Mischief Makers. Ah. Looks like something for Nintendo. Singularity. Number one, Jade Empire. Nice I've heard of this. Here. Not a lot of guards, are there? How are your stocks of food? Yeah, they, developer Bioware launched their yeah, they used to RPG push ads at in, like, Dragon game Age, magazines. Which a little game called Jade Empire, which was unanimously met with overwhelming critical praise from critics and gamers alike. It's very clear that tons of love went into crafting this experience, as it boasted an incredibly epic and moving storyline set in a fictional kingdom inspired by ancient China. Nearly every aspect that makes a great game was finely tuned here. The gameplay was hard-hitting and addictive, the music was exciting, the graphics were stunning, and, as icing on the cake, Jade Empire introduced the romance system before the aforementioned Mass Effect. This one just screamed franchise all over it. So, where the heck are the other installments? What happened? Do you agree, yeah. Alist? What, what video game do you feel deserves a sequel? I trust that my men went too rough on you, officer. Might ask them the same question, sir. Those guys are out of shape. For more top tens that we promise will keep coming every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Mmm, cola. So yeah, that, that was a pretty good list. I, you know, like I said, I I could probably name a few games that deserve a sequel that never got it. <clears throat> Super Mario RPG, like I said. I, earlier uh, but I you know and I know you're gonna say well what about the Paper Mario series it was pretty much a spirit spiritual successor to it and, well that may be true but it's not Super Mario RPG there will never ever be a game you know like well you know as far as the Mario and and you know RPG type of things go like there will never ever be another game like Super Mario RPG. So you know, not at least not like perfect like that. That game was nearly perfect. At least in my opinion. But uh anyways, uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know and what games you think deserve a sequel. So uh, if you like this video remember like and subscribe. Thanks.